Assalamu alaikum and uh, anatomy and physiology lecture of the series uh, today is the lecture number 8 and that uh, lecture number 8 we will go to learn about the same uh, about the forearm and the forearm uh, as I told you earlier in the previous lecture there is the, from the elbow joint till to the wrist joint this uh, uh, portion of the upper limb is called the forearm and the forearm is made up by the uh, two type of the long bone the medial bone, the name of the medial bone is uh, uh, called the ulna and then the, uh, the lateral bone which is uh, uh, situated on the outer side of the forearm that is uh, called the radius. So in the previous lecture, in the previous lecture we learned about the ulna bone which, were the, which, which is the uh, medial bone of the forearm. Today we will go to learn about the radius bone which is the lateral uh, uh, bone of the uh, uh, lateral side which is present on the lateral side of the forearm of the upper limb. Let us come upon the uh, learn more in detail about the uh, what are the characteristics and what are the uh, uh, features are present on the radius bone. The radius is again is the type of the long bone as I told you earlier the uh, the three characteristic are present in the type of the long bone, the, uh, the proximal end, uh, the upper extremity, uh, the proximal end or the upper extremity, the shaft which was the uh, two-third uh, proportion or uh, the major portion of the long bone uh, covered by the or made up by the shaft or called the shaft and the lower extremity, the lower end or the distal end. The lower extremity or the distal end is the third part of the long bone. So we will come up on the diagrammatic structure. In the diagrammatic structure, we will learn more in detail about the radius bone. So let's come up to start from the uh, upper portion of the proximal end of the radius. If you will see in the in the upper extremity is a rounded and a structure is there. This rounded structure which is present at the top of the radius bone, this is called the head, head of the radius, the head of the radius. In the, in the medial side, at the medial side of the head of the radius from here to till to here, this is, this is the articular facet over here and this articular facet which is present on the medial side of the head edge of radius this is the radical radical articular facet facet via surface articular facet and this articular facet is the responsible to go attach at the radial notch which is present at the lateral side of the uh, ulna which is present on the ulna bone the radial notch and this red of uh, the articular facet of the which is present on the head of the radius bone will go to make the joint and this joint is called the red, superior radio ulnar joint just at the below of the uh, head, just below of the head, this portion is a narrowing in structure. And this narrowing in structure, this is narrow structure, this narrow structure is called the neck of the ulna. This is called the neck of the uh, ulna bone. And just to at the top of the head, head at the top of the head is a articular fossa is there and this head on the top of the is a fossa this fossa is articular facet and this articular facet for the articular facet for the facet for capitulum capitulum this top of the this area, the top of the is a fossa is here, and this fossa are fa this fossa articular facet or fossa is responsible to goes 
uh, unite with the capitulum head of the humerus bone uh, which is and then take the part in the elbow joints let's say come up on the uh, on the uh, just it below head of the ulna and just bed of head of the uh, radius bone and the just below the uh, below of the head of the humerus on the uh, medial side is a tuberosity is here and this tuberosity this tuberosity which is present here this tuberosity is called the radial tuberosity radial tuberosity radial tuberosity this one is for the radial tuberosity and this portion and just below at the radial tuberosity at the radial tuberosity is the articular is the uh, area for the attachment of the brachialis brachialis and biceps muscles biceps muscle of the radial head the biceps muscles is attached over here at the radial tuberosity and the the radial head of the biceps tendon is attached over here and the biceps muscles the ulnar head attached over here on the ulnar tuberosity and the radial tuberosity and this biceps muscle and brachialis muscle is responsible for the flexion of the forearm bone just at the uh, and we reach at the shaft level at the shaft level is at the interior portion of the shaft is the some surface area or here this the medial the this the shaft is a sharp border is here and this sharp border is the anterior border this sharp border is called the anterior border anterior border and this anterior border which is sharp in a structure which is present on the uh, medial side it is called the anterior border because the anterior membrane is attached over here the anterior membrane is attached over here in the anterior border and also on the anterior border of the ulna bone to make the uh, to keep the uh, both the ulna and the radius bone parallel uh, parallel in sus and the suspended and location at the uh, and make the stronger the ulno radial joint or the both the uh, ulna bone as well radius and ulna bone just at the lateral side just at the interior side of the anterior side this anterior side is the mostly the major portion of the interior surface of the uh, of the radius bone is this area is the responsible for the flexor flexor pollis longus flexor pollis longus muscle is attached over here and just the just above of the uh, of the at the opposite of the radial tuberosity is another surface area which is present at the interior surface and the interior and the lateral surface and the interior and the anterior lateral surface this area of the upper third one third of portion is the for the pronator teres pronator teres muscles is attached over here on this area and this line which is present between the uh, pronator teres area and flexor pollis longus this area is responsible for the flexor flexor digitorum digitorum superficialis muscle superficialis muscle this superficialis muscle muscles the half portions is attached over here and some is attached over here at the 
at the just on the uh, the medial side of the ulna just below as i told you in the previous lecture there at the just below of the coracoid process of the ulna on the medial border the one uh, the 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 uh, the flexor uh, the flexor digitorum superficial muscles attach over and, and comes and attach at the at the radius uh, bone and on just below of the uh, of the uh, superficial uh, flexor superficial uh, digitorum superficial flexor digitorum superficial muscles area just below of that uh, on the medial surface and other surface over here or the ulnar bone this area is for the pronator teres muscle and the pronator teres muscles is uh, is uh, originate for here and comes attach on the uh, lateral side on the uh, on the lateral side or lateral surface of the radius bone this pronator muscle teres originate from here and comes attach on the this area of the pronator teres area of the radius bone on the interior surface on lateral interior surface so now at the lower area the lower surface interior lower surface this one this one must is attached for the attachment of the this area is for attachment of the pronator quadratus quadratus muscle quadratus muscle and this quadratus muscle is also attached over on the ulna as well on the lower uh, distal end the distal portion of the surface on the interior surface of the radius of the radius bone at the lateral side just this this portion this projection this projection is called the stoloid process stoloid process of radius bone at the at the uh, medial side at the medial side on the stoloid of the distal end is the, again is a notch is here and this notch is called the ulnar notch ulnar notch in the ulnar notch which is present at the distal end of the lateral side of the radius bone is responsible the the head of the ulna will come and join over here and to make the inferior radio ulnar joint and the inferior ulnar joint and superior radio ulnar joint the pronation and supination movement is possible uh, between these two bones in the forearm now after the inferior surface we will come up on the uh, posterior pronator teres muscle as i told you over here that the lateral and lateral medial lateral medial portion is for the pronator teres muscle and the, on the posterior surface is again is the the superior surface the surface just below of the neck of the oh, radius that this area is for the pronator teres muscle and at the at the middle one of the lateral border is for the flexor flexor digitorum digitorum longus muscle digitorum digitorum longus muscle digitorum longus muscle flexor digitorum superficialis muscle is attached over here superficialis muscle attached over here and at the uh, medial side at of the medial side medial border this area this the medial border the medial surface on the uh, on the radius this area is for the abductor pollis pollis longus muscle and just below of the abductor pollis longus muscle is the in the middle one is another area on the border of the medial side on the medial side this area is for the extensor extensor pollis pollis longus muscle 
this longest previous muscle extensor pollis brevis muscle is attached over here and when we reach at the at the bottom of the at the distal end at the distal end this is again is the distal end of the of the radius bone in the distal end of the radius bone on the medial side on the medial side again is a notch is here and this notch is called the ulnar notch because the ulnar uh, to the ulnar head the head of the ulna is attached over here at the medial side at the is the four type of the groove is present at the posterior uh, surface of the distal end of the ulna and the, the first one is the groove over here and this groove is for the extensor extens extensor carpi extensor carpi carpi radialis radialis longus muscle the tendon of the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle is passed through from this groove and the another groove over here and this groove is for the extensor extensor carpi carpi radialis radialis brevis muscle the extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle tendon is passed through from here the second one from the uh, from the lateral side now the another groove the third one groove is for the extensor extensor pollis longus muscle longus and anterior muscle and the and the sesamus the extensor pollis longus and anterior muscle is passed through uh, uh, and this extensor pollis longus muscle is passed through from here now the last one is the fourth one which is present on the medial side just at the uh, just at the adjacent with the uh, ulnar notch is another area is the groove over here this is the, the fourth groove this groove is for the extensor in in the cis muscles tendon is passed through from it so the four grooves are present at the distal end and this the these are the four grooves are the responsible for passage of the different type of the uh, muscles tendon and it will goes to attach on the carpuses of the and the flanges of the hands let's come up on the uh, to learn uh, uh, some features which is on the original bone uh, of the radius so first of all uh, uh, this is a radius bone this is a type of the long bone and the the three characteristic of the long bone is present in every long bone the upper extremity the shaft which is the major one portion which is centrical and rounded in shape and then the the third the the lower portion the lower extremity or the distal end now uh, we we take the first of all the top of the proximal end or the dist, uh, proximal end or the upper extremity of the uh, radius bone this is a rounded in structure and this rounded in structure is called the uh, head of the uh, head of the radius and just below of the head of the ra radius is the narrow uh, in a structure this narrow in a structure is called the neck of the radius just on the uh, on the medial side on the medial side of the uh, radius is the articular facet is present over here this articular facet on the head of the radius is for the uh, art responsible it is make the articulation with the uh, radial notch of the ulna bone to make the superior radio ulna joint over here okay on the just on the medial side just on the medial side is our tuberosity is here this is called the radial tuberosity and this radial tuberosity is the responsible for the attachment of the biceps muscle and brachialis muscle 
now in the in the just on the C on the top of the head of the uh, radius bone is the fossa is here and these articular facet are fossa for the uh, capitulum uh, portion of the humerus bone to make the elbow joint now on the in the, in the radius if you will come up on the shaft in the shaft it is has three border and three surfaces the 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 which is the border which is a present on the interior side it is called the interior border and this is called the uh, the border which is present towards the ulna bone this is the medial border or the other name is called the interosseous border because the interosseous membrane is attached over here and then the the, the border which is present on the back side this is the rough like in a structure this is called the posterior border so it has three border interior border posterior border and interosseous border and it is also three surface the 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 surface which is present between the interosseous uh, border and the interior border and this surface is called the interior surface and then the uh, the surface which is present between the interior border and the posterior border this surface is called the lateral surface and the surface which is present between the interosseous border and the posterior border this surface is called the posterior surface so if you will come of the interior surface just below of the radial tuberosity is a is a line over here and this line is called the oblique line or the rough line is here and this rough line is for the responsible for the pronator teres muscles is attached over here pronator teres muscle attached over here so uh, and just at the top of the uh, uh, the interior surface this the major portion of the interior surface is the uh, this area the interior surface area is responsible for the attachment of the uh, flexor pollis longus muscles and on the just on the uh, the middle of the the interior border at the shaft this is the for the attachment of the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle is attached over here on just on the lateral side on the lateral side is the pronator teres muscle is order, attached over here as the oblique line and at the radial tuberosity is the biceps muscles of the uh, radial head is attached over here at the interior surface, in the interior surface just above of the distal end is the triangular in surface is area, area is there and this triangular surface area is for the attachment of the uh, pronator quadratus muscles is attached over here. Just at the stoloid process, this one is the stick like is the stoloid process as just above the stoloid process this area is for the uh, pronator uh, for the uh, bronchioradialis muscle, bronchioradialis muscle is attached over here. At the, this is a triangular surface. This is for the pronator quadratus muscles. At the just right below of the distal end, you see on the medial side is the notch is here, and this is called the ulnar notch because the head of the ulna is attached over here. At the posterior side is the uh, four type of the grooves are here, and I told you earlier in the diagrammatic structures, diagrammatic structure, diagrammatic structures. And the, the from the lateral side, this this the groove is here, and this groove is for the extensor uh, extensor carpi radialis longus muscle. And the second one groove, which is present over here, is the uh, is the present here is the extensor carpitis radialis brevis muscle tendon is passed through from it. And the third one groove, which is present on the in the middle one in the middle portion, this is for the extensor. Uh, uh, for the extensor pollis longus muscles and the the last one the fourth groove which is present uh, just at the uh, lateral side of the radial uh, ulnar notch and this is for the extensor uh, indicius uh, muscles is tendon is passed through from it this is the estrolyte process of the uh, of the uh, radius bone and the last one is the two articular facet over here on the lateral side this articular facet is for the scaphoid bone uh, scaphoid carpus uh, carpuses and the medial is for the uh, lunate this is true surface area at the below of the at the inferior surface of the distal end this this the major portion is for the scaphoid carpus and the, the medial one is for the lunate 
carpus uh, surface area for the articulation or carpus surface area to make the wrist joint to make tag the parts in the wrist joint so this is the all about of the radius bone uh, which is we learned today and which we uh, learned the upper extremity the different parts of the surfaces which is are present on the upper extremity at the shaft and in the lower extremity if you any sort of the queries or the question you can email me or uh, you can write down the comments or any question or queries in, in my youtube channel inbox and uh, i after the watching of this uh, video uh, for the for the learning of the anatomy and physiology of the skeletal system you can uh, i request you all just to uh, uh, subscribe my youtube hph youtube channel thank you